fresh off the delivery truck yesterday. I actually met the delivery guy at the end of the road with the tractor to pick these up. I got two units perfectly packaged and delivered on a 18-wheeler. Uh, these came to me from Signature Solar with exceptional customer service and really fast delivery. Uh, I did an unboxing video for one of the two units yesterday, but realized that I'd left my home address on the side of the packaging. So scrap that, we're doing it again today. Uh, it comes, each one of these comes in two unit boxes. So this is one setup. Um, so I already have that unboxed. This box down here, that's the inside function right here. This has the vents and this is where the cold air is blown into the house. It comes with the line set here, the electrical cords, the remote control, really nice remote control, really simple, and all of the batteries and connectors that you need for everything along the way. The drip line for the condensation that comes out of it, and this is the outdoor unit. And it is nice and small. You can see Titan next to it for comparison. Um, but I think this is about, uh, actually I had the tape measure out yesterday to do this, so let's do that again for you here. Let's see what we can get for a length on this little guy. I think it's about 15 inches in width, and you can see I'm gonna overhang just a little bit so we can do an estimation, but it's about 14 inches thick. So you can put this relatively close to a wall, and you can see the direction that the fan should blow, so that should be facing outward. And I'll do a whole series of the installation of both of these units. And the previous video that I kind of mentioned these coming, one of them's gonna go here in the, the garage slash shop, and one of them is going to go into the finish room over the garage, which is directly above this room. So this will give me a lot more cooling in the house and in the garage, which has never been cooled before. These are, and I'm saying the word cooled, but know that these are heat pumps. So this can actually heat just the same as it can cool. So that is actually really important because for me in the South, I'm always prioritizing cooling because I don't need it to be that hot because I grew up in Maine, so I didn't need the, the heat as much as I need the cooling. But needless to say, this specific unit is the 24K, and that's 24,000 BTUs it's referring to, which is a two-ton unit. And the two-ton variant has an AC input, so if you're running this off of your regular standard electric service at 60 hertz, it's between 208 and 230. Usually people refer to that as 220, and that's what your stoves, your washers, or dryers, and things like that are usually plugged into. So bigger electronics use this higher voltage, and that's just two phases running simultaneously, and that helps with starting motors and things like that, but also reducing the amount of amperage that it's needed because there's more voltage to carry that amperage. Um, and then the DC input, this is what you can plug the MC4 connectors into, which is 90 through 380 volts DC. And you'll see on the side of this unit here, this is where you would put the electric into it. And these are just standard MC4 connectors. So you can just clip in your um, your solar array. There's no intermediary that is needed. You don't need an inverter. You don't need a charge controller. Just plug your solar in. And I'll zoom in on this so you can see all of the specs on the side of the unit. Just in case you're curious, you can pause at any point in that so you can see what you have there. Perfect. So these are AC. DC, which is really confusing because it's an AC unit that runs on AC and DC. But anyway, um, <laughs> so these can run off of regular alternating current and direct current voltages. That means that you can have solar plugged in at the exact same time as your grid power. And if there's enough sun to turn the compressor or the pumps, then it will run off of that DC from solar and it will prioritize. There's an application and a remote for controlling all of those uh, features. So this is really handy for places where it's nice and sunny or you have some sun and you wanna just supplement the amount of power that you're using to perform the task of cooling or ventilating. So this is really, really awesome technology and I really wish that this had come out a long time ago because I think a lot of people that have been moving to mini splits missed the boat by getting on a little too early and now they have these really cool units that I'm going to install these first with just AC. So I will then test how much power is being consumed by this device 
And then I'm gonna plug solar into it. And I'm gonna try and get to the point where if I don't need to run these at night, I won't have to, because I'll just extra cool during the day to let it warm back up at night. Because I really don't care, we don't get that, it's not that warm overnight. As long as I dehumidify and I keep the, uh, the heat away, that's all I'm looking for. So needless to say, these units are really cool technology. AC, DC, and it's a mini split. And again, if you don't have the place to plug in a 220 and you don't wanna hire an electrician, you can obviously get the smaller unit, which is the one ton or 12K, which is 12,000 BTU unit, which is the exact same thing, but just a little bit less cooling capacity. And instead of running off of the AC, 208 to 230, it would say 110 to 130, I think it is, or 108. Um, and mine is 124 volts here. And every everywhere runs a little bit different and it is all very uh, grid and local dependent. But needless to say, I did an unboxing video of this yesterday and realized that my home address was on those boxes. Didn't really want that to be on YouTube, so I'm gonna start over. So I already have it unboxed. This unit here, which is the inside function of this, is in that box. This, which is the outdoor unit, is in that box. And we'll open up so you can see how that goes. But just to give you the TLDR, this unit already has the refrigerant charged into the lines in it. This line set also has the refrigerant charged into the lines. And the outside unit you guessed it, it already has the refrigerant in it. So you do not need to hire an HVAC technician to activate or commission this system. You just plug it in. There's some directions on this and I'll go through the entire installation. I just wanted to do an unboxing so that you could see the size of the unit. It's pretty small for what it's worth. It's about half the size of my other 210 or two ton units. And I'll show you what those look like here. They're right outside the door by the garage. Um, I got some cardboard that I gotta break down and send off to recycle. This is a two ton unit and this is a two ton unit. The whole house runs off a total capacity of four tons. This is upstairs and that's downstairs. So this one is basically going to be eclipsed or replaced by this unit in here. And what's going to happen is I'll still use that unit. I'll still get it recharged and replaced. But this, when it's running off of solar, will then make the amount of power that I have to consume in order to cool my house much less. So this will save me a ton of money and it's a little bit more environmentally friendly because these are super efficient. So let's, without further ado, snip into what these boxes are. These scissors are terrible. They used to be sharp, and then I probably cut something I shouldn't have with them. But that is there. And then I'll get the rest of the pocket knife. Always carry a pocket knife, because who doesn't? And if you use these types of knives, these EABs, exchange blades, these little units are really handy for that. Highly recommend them. Um, and I use Irwin bimetal blades, just in case anyone's interested. These are made for roofing shingles, and they are really, really, really sharp, like scary amounts of sharp. So be careful, don't cut yourself. Um, shut that door because I can hear that buzz and it's driving me crazy. So now that the dogs are in, you can see what comes in the box here. And again, this is just a duplicate of what is already out here. So this is the exact same unit, same thing. And in this box, you receive that line set. So there's the line set, nicely packaged, got all the foam in there to keep it safe. Everything looks like it should as it came from the factory. And then we'll do the same thing with this. This box actually has a little bit more in it. It also has, he man that thing out of the way here. Um, let's cut that. Oh, something. Oh, kick the dog toe. He didn't like that. Probably shouldn't have sat in the way. Sorry, little buddy. He likes to stand where my legs go. The number of times a day that I tell Titan to move from my feet zone is extraordinary. He's kind of a needy puppy. Is it true, Titan? Are you a needy puppy? I have all three boys clinging around me. Now, the part of this that I really wanted to show you of the unboxing was actually the piece that I have upstairs for this unit already, which is this. I'll spin it around the right way. 
So the one tool you'll really need, other than a little bit of electric line to run your uh, power to it, is a drill bit. And you'll see that listed right here, 3.35 inches. Um, so that's basically three and a third, a little bit over. Um, but this is where you would drill the hole in the wall. So this template is a one-to-one -one scale. This is the upward direction. This outer line, the black one here, describes this shape on the wall. So you can pre-orient it. You can use some push pins to put it in place. And then you can pre-drill all of the attachment holes for the metal bracket that's on the back of this unit. And I'll roll it up and show you that in a second, just so you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. This weird shape here is a metal bracket that you screw into the wall. This then has the unit hang itself onto it. But before you do that, you drill a hole in the wall with a hole saw and you do it at an angle downward so that if this were flat, it's sloped downward so that any of the water from the discharge from the evaporation goes out the hose. It's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. Uh, and there are tons of videos on this, but I'll also make some quick content around that. And for me, quick content isn't even a real thing. I'm pretty long-winded. If you've been around this channel for a while, you know that that's true. Hold on, let me pause this so I can roll this up without breaking it. So here we go. This is the bottom of that unit. So you can see what it looks like. This is the wall bracket and you can see these little clips that hold it in place. So this is how this piece of uh, attachment happens. There's a screw holding it in place right now. I'll remove that uh, to take it off. But this bracket here is what hangs that unit to the wall. So it has a nice attachment point. These are the pre-charged lines. You can see they're nice and capped right there. And those are the refrigerant lines. So everything that you need other than a hole saw is right in this box. And this is a relatively inexpensive for the value that you get HVAC unit. Now, similar units will cost a little bit less. Usually, I think this is around $1,900 for a single unit. But consider that the energy that it takes to power this is going to be part of the lifetime cost of that. So if this unit lasts 15 to 20 years, and in that 15 to 20 years, the majority of the power that it consumed was from solar and you needed no inverter, you needed no charge controller or no extra fancy stuff, you could literally just build a wooden stand and put some solar panels on it and power your HVAC for your house. So this, in my opinion, is well worth every penny of it. And it's very, very important for people who might be trying to build off-grid situations where you don't have access to power. Or in some cases, you might have an outbuilding, a shipping container, or something that you want to reduce the temperature inside, but you don't have power run to that. And it might cost you a couple you know, six or $800 to have someone come and run to line set underground and make sure it's to code. Whereas this, you could install it by yourself in a matter of a single day and have air conditioning in an outside building. I would love to see if anyone on here has bought any of these types of units and turned a shipping container into like a refrigeration unit for like keeping vegetables, basically like a root cellar, keeping vegetables uh, chilled or anything like that. Cause that will be a future project on my horizon, but not quite yet. This will be installed first for the garage, then this unit for upstairs. And then I'll probably get two more units. I'll be putting a ton of solar on the house to accommodate this. But as of right now, I'm actually really fortunate. The owner that had this house previous to me was a horse farmer and I got a little barn for that, which we'll be getting solar for. Right now, uh, what we're working on is, or working with is I have a 30 amp and a 50 amp service already outside. So I have a 210 receptacle and this unit is going to go here and another one probably right above it. And it will go up into that, the finish room over garage, which I'm supplementally cooling right now with a window unit because the upstairs unit just stinks and it would cost about $7,000 to have them replace that unit. And these are way more environmentally friendly and make more sense financially. So I couldn't resist the opportunity to try out one of these products and see how it works. I'll let you all know for the installation, how that goes and what you need to know about installing one of these on your own but I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions about how these units work or anything else, put some comments down below. I'll try and answer as much of those questions as I can. Uh, I'll put the link for Signature Solar in the description so you can see where to buy this product yourself. Uh, 
uh, they'll give me a little link that I can send you over there with. And you can see all of this beautiful packaging they've done. It's done a really good job in making sure that everything is kept nice and tidy in these boxes with good styrofoam to keep everything safe. So again, exceptional customer service, great product packaging, and a really revolutionary type of technology that I personally think should be mandated that all AC units built after 2025 should accompany DC PV inputs in the MC4 connector function. Because this is the other thing. If you have solar on your house and you have net metering and you lose power to your house because of a power outage, let's say a hurricane, I live in the hurricane region, so this is really applicable to me, and you wanted your house to still be cool, but there was no power, your solar on your house does zero. That is made to be grid tied and you do not have battery backup. You can't use that power. So I'm building a battery backup, but if the battery backup went out or if the grid goes out in the meantime, until I build that, this unit, every single time the sun is up and there's solar that feeds into this, it will run. So I can keep my house cool and that is really important when you get into places where the temperatures reach near 100 in the summer and the humidity is atrocious. So again, the technology is super, super cool. I really wish that this had come out long before this, but ironically, this is fairly new and I just came into the need of a new HVAC unit and that's where this journey starts. So I hope you join along for the journey. I'll install these two. There'll be two more to come after this. A ton of solar that's going to be put on the house to supply both of those units and two other units. And this whole barn is going to be tiled in solar and a battery bank put inside it just so that I can capitalize on the sun that you can see is so benevolently shining and beaming down on every surface around me. And this right here is the roof surface on my house that will accommodate the solar array to feed those units. I can put about seven kilowatts up there and these units don't really need that much total solar to run. So they're hyper efficient. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts. Have you ever built any exterior off-grid buildings that use mini splits to keep them cool, refrigeration units, and or have you ever installed one of these? I'd love to know your feedback, any tips or tricks that you've done along the way. This coming weekend, I'll be installing this unit, so stay tuned. You'll see some more content coming shortly.